Because you chose to emerge as a 21st century leader in charge of change. Now I want you to see yourself beyond just barking orders. You are now uniquely positioned to transform the workforce with trust and purpose to achieve accountable results. In this tutorial on Real Criminal Justice Reform, we will discuss the five keys to inspiring evidence-based commitments in the performance management cycle. I am Charles Rambo, a retired lieutenant with over 30 years of real-world law enforcement expertise, certified as a senior instructor by the Georgia Peace Officers Standards and Training Council. I have taught hundreds of law enforcement supervisors, managers, and executives about performance management and talent development. I am honored to have mentored hundreds of peace officers, where in less than five years of their career, at least six out of 10 of those officers now serve in progressive supervisory and executive roles in law enforcement. Currently, I'm also honored to serve on an education committee with a group of clinical counselors and psychiatrists in applying neuroscience to transforming law enforcement cultures. All a continued dedication to the profession that I love and mentoring a new generation of leaders in the criminal justice field. In tutorial one, you were challenged to reach deep into your DNA and discover the leader within you for being in charge of change. In tutorial two, you discovered how CompStat analytics can transform any agency into a model of accountable policing. You will now be prepared to take on perhaps the most complex challenges of criminal justice reform, performance management, how to inspire trust and purpose in human behavior to achieve consistent and unprecedented results. In teaching performance management and having supervised law enforcement officers, I have come to appreciate that deep within every person's DNA, even the most frustrated officer wants to be held up to their greatness. What are the keys? First, trust in the quality of your communication. The quality of your communication has a direct correlation to the cognitive functions of the brain to receive, process, store, and recall information. When trust is earned by those in charge of change, people intrinsically follow and reciprocate that behavior. Second, when people feel connected to the purpose of the mission, and you are treating them as human beings, not organizational capital. You will be amazed at how individuals and groups transform in getting things done. So in my signature Socratic style of teaching, I direct this statement to you. Because performance management has a significant impact on the delivery of services to the communities you serve, yes, you do have a responsibility for transforming trust and purpose in the people you lead. As a law enforcement trainer, supervisor, manager, or executive, this is not only an accountability, but also sets the foundation for how people will behave, particularly those entrusted with authority and weapons in their profession. Most critical to this statement is whether you were present or not. When an act of negligence has occurred, you could be vicariously liable for the employee's actions. Now, this does not require hand-holding on every call for service or micromanaging every millisecond of the shift. However, when a civil action is served upon your official capacity, trust and performance must be balanced with three levels of control to limit your liability. Number one, training. Was the officer adequately trained in the performance of the duty? Now, let's be very clear. Official documented training precedes how the organizational culture will dictate. Forget what you learned at the academy because this is how we do things. And training is not just a certificate on the wall. Training is the transfer of qualified research and application from the classroom to actual real-world performance. Second, did the officer conform the duty to act in accordance with an established policy, regulation, or statute that clearly defined how to perform the duty in strict compliance with the letter or at least within the spirit of the policy? To this point, as a supervisor, are you banning negligent behaviors in principle that are stated in policy, but tolerating those acts in practice? Third, 
Did the officer have a level of supervision to direct them in the performance of the duty? Now, let's be clear. Supervision, as I stated, is not just determined by a rank or a title. A supervisor, absent formal leadership, is the person with the most training and experience to direct people in any circumstance. And because you made the bold declaration in tutorial one to lead people in a more purposeful way, it's going to take leaders like you at every level of the culture, particularly in toxic cultures, to exercise these controls with courage and competent character. From recruiting to retention, the quality of your communication in the performance management cycle solidifies trust and purpose of why things are being done. And because performance management is developing specific skills that take years to cultivate, once toxic environments are now more human-centric cultures where people feel they are being invited to come to success. Now, here are the five keys to evidence-based commitment in the performance management cycle that will solidify trust and purpose towards achieving agency goals. The first key is to plan expectations according to duties, training, and experience. Match the natural or learned skills to the functions that people will perform. Openness about the organizational goals and the reasons for management decisions reduces stress and increases the brain's ability to focus on that mission. The second key is to develop strategies with officer input to achieve goals. Engage the officer to articulate and align to how they can achieve the purpose and with minimal levels of supervision. This level of entrustment gives them gradual autonomy and decision-making authority to make more accountable and transparent decisions. The third key is monitor performance and decision-making authority. Conduct random follow-ups during roll calls, active calls for service, or counseling sessions. This will ensure that personnel are meeting goals as planned. The fourth key is to rate performance and progress with meaningful feedback. Qualified insights from supervisors are vital to aligning this new generation to see how their performance is actually making a difference. And when that feedback is objective, don't be surprised at how they will go to the next level to do things exceedingly and abundantly above your expectations. And the fifth key, reward milestones with positive or negative reinforcements. The cognition of the brain inspires human behaviors, especially when being recognized and honored. You'll be surprised at the level of long-term retention in your agency when law enforcement officers are rewarded in a timely manner for performing duties to protect life, liberty, and property with ethics and professionalism. This Learn and Lead tutorial on Real Criminal Justice Reform has empowered you with thought leadership to align performance management to a pipeline of mission-ready leaders and delivering superior services to the communities that you serve. And behind the scenes is a leader in charge of change, just like you, transforming the learning objectives into real-world performances that will exceed your expectations. Please like, subscribe, and share our channel dedicated to empowering a new generation of criminal justice leaders just like you to make an immediate difference in how people perform with inside of your agencies and the communities that you serve.